Hi, I'm Shristi. In this video, I want to show you a really quick example for how you can add Angular Material Design Autocomplete to your app in a really, really, really quick way. So if you're not familiar with Autocomplete, it basically just lets you uh, type into an input and let the user uh, easily find what they might be looking for. So for example, as you're typing in, it'll actually highlight the elements of the input, the characters that you've typed that match with the values that are available for you to select from, for example. But it's actually a little bit more than that. It lets you uh, match from either a local or remote data. The example that I'm going to go through is really just going to be looking at using a local data source but the concepts will work exactly the same if you're grabbing data from um, a um, MongoDB collection, for, for example. But one of the things I noticed when I was having a look at the examples here uh, on the, um, uh, on the uh, material.angularjs.org page is they're actually pretty involved. There's like a lot kind of going on there and that may worry a few people. Um, so I'll show you an example without really even touching um, any of the JavaScript for uh, the demo app that in the last few videos. So to start off with, I'm just going to have a look at the HTML and um, I've got a few different elements here. So I'm going to grab everything from MD complete, sorry, MD content all the way down to the MD content tag at the bottom there. So I'll just grab all this and we'll pull some stuff out. Um, as we go. Just to show you an example of the demo app, this is the demo app that I've um, been looking at in the last few videos. We've got a few tabs, we've got some headings, uh, we've got a sidebar and uh, we've got a main content area. So what I want to do is in this video show you, uh, we're going to put a little uh, input for the autocomplete just at the top here for the sidebar and we use that just to um, you know, filter through this this list here. So let's jump into it. Just open up uh, WebStorm here. Um, this particular view is in core, um, in the client folder, down in views, and just in home here. So I've got uh, the actual side nav, the sidebar, um, identified as container three. So that's everything that's kind of on that side. And container four is the content. Because I want the autocomplete to sit at the top here, I'm just going to make a little bit of space and plug it in just above the list, uh, like so. Now there's quite a lot of um, code in this and I'm gonna just remove everything I don't need. So I don't need any of these things here. They're just really there for the example itself. I'm not gonna worry about not found. I'm just gonna try and clean this up so that it's got the least number of things. Get rid of disabled and no cache. Uh, won't really matter too much for this exam. Uh, get rid of that uh, paragraph there. And um, now we're more or less left with autocomplete. So I'll just have a quick look at what these things will actually do for us. Um, so the, these little um, directives actually give us access or react to things uh, that uh, happen within the input itself. So you can see uh, when an item's been selected, when the text has changed, so when type, someone's typing along, what the actual text is at any point in time. Uh, if someone selects a different item, you can see that change. Uh, MD items is actually the list itself, so the, the list that appears in the input. Um, the text to display in that list, when the autocomplete should kick, kick off, so at how many characters do you need to type before it actually kicks off. Um, the placeholder, so here I'll just say, uh, let's go with something like, who is your fave avatar? And uh, down the bottom here, the highlight text is, as you're typing along, um, the, uh, the text will kind of match and highlight elements of the list that you're um, searching through. So that's the autocomplete itself. And what that will do is just put a little uh, input at the top there, but that won't actually put any data in that. So let's have a quick look at what that looks like. I'll just save that. Um, so at this point, you'll see that there's a little uh, input there. There wouldn't be anything in there. So yeah, it's just kind of going, oh, hang on, there's there's nothing going on. There's a few lovely little errors down the bottom here too, because there's nothing that's matching uh, this query search here. So that's, that's fine. 
Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of things. So firstly, this home controller, I'm just going to go to controllers, have a look at home controller. Um, something that I've gone through in previous videos. So um, we've just got here a user service. So we load a list of users and um, we're basically identifying when one is selected. Uh, we've got um, a bottom sheet uh, on this particular view as well. And uh, just a few elements down the bottom um, to refer from self to this. So that, uh, if that doesn't mean too much to you, that's okay. I'm not gonna change anything here because uh, I wanna keep it simple, but I'll just show you the list of users. Um, in this particular example, I'm just using a data service. Uh, so this is the list of users. Um, so we can see that our users have a name, they've got an avatar, they've got some content. So that's the information that's displayed in this uh, content area here. Okay, hopefully you're still with me. Um, at the bottom, we've just got a method to load all and we're just using um, the queue service to, um, to basically make it look a little bit like a remote call. So that's all, all that's going on here, there's nothing uh, overly fancy or, or crazy going on. So what I'm going to do is actually kind of hook into what I've already got. So we've got this um, this uh, this user's scope, um, and I want to use that as part of uh, formatting or formulating the autocomplete. I've got here a reference to this control, which is from the example, right? So that's uh, where's the example? Um, it's got this demo as, as CTRL as the controller as syntax at the top. What I want to do is probably just use UL. So I'm just going to uh, do a quick find and replace. So for CTRL, whoops, and just replace that with UL, uh, which is the reference that I've got from my controller. Just replace all there. Okay, so that's step one, if you like. So we're referring at least to the same controller. Um, now I want to refer to the scope of users in that controller. So I'm just going to go to UL, users, and that's what I want to display in my list. Um, as we had a look at there, our users have a name. So I'm going to uh, actually display the name of the users in the list. And that's also the thing that I want to highlight against as well. So item dot name there too. Okay, so save that. So now, hopefully, when we have a look at the example, uh, we can actually see a list of users um, over here. There we go. We, so we've got our list of users now, just using the exact same scope as what the list is underneath here. So if I type, it's really hard to see, but it's actually highlighting kind of the first part of the match, uh, the matching records there. Okay, so, okay, in, in itself, that's kind of cool, kind of cool. It's like a little bit of a select that lets you highlight elements, um, but it doesn't really work like you would expect an autocomplete to work. So if I look at the example, um, the example actually reduces the list, right? So it makes that list shorter depending, or only displaying what matches. And that's essentially what you think of um, when you're thinking of autocomplete normally. Except to do that, it actually um, does this funky thing where it changes things to lowercase and then matches on lowercase and um, does all this, this crazy stuff here. Um, and that's fine if your data is sitting on the server. So if you wanted to, um, every time a person comes along and they type into this particular input, you want to send a message to the server, to Express, to Mongos, uh, to MongoDB, uh, query the database to get that reduced list that only match those characters and then pass it all the way back and then display that reduced list, you could definitely do that. And that's um, that's what it means when it says you can use local or server side lists, right? Um, but what if you just kind of want to cheat a little bit and just use the local um, one? Because you just want to put it into your app without having to worry about it too much. Here's a little kind of tip to do that really quickly. So uh, I'm already using ul.users. I'm already using it like or as if it was an ng repeat. So why can't I just filter directly while I'm here? So for example, with MD items where I've got your auto users, I'm going to just put a filter on the end. 
So you just need one of those long pipes and then it's just filter and then it's just the text that you want to filter against which is that text right there. So let's have a quick look at that. So now what I'm hoping happens is when I'm typing in the list, it should only show me those items in the list that actually match what I'm typing. So if I now type L I A, there you go. It only shows me um, that particular name. And if I type G E N, it now just shows me that particular name. So that's kind of cool. But what would be maybe cooler, maybe not cooler, but maybe cooler is this list here, if that could also be filtered um, when I type along. And I can do that because I have the list just underneath here. So that's the MD list, which is showing those list of uh, users right there. I'm going to put exactly the same filter down there too. So I just copy that and I'm just going to paste it on the end of that, like that there, save that. And hopefully this time when we do the filter, we'll actually be filtering both the autocomplete input list as well as the list of, um, of avatars that's underneath here. So let's try, uh, try Lawrence this time. There you go. There's Lawrence. And if I want someone else, let's say Ernesto, uh, there's Ernesto. All right, then I can actually click there as well. Now at the moment when I click, nothing's happening, um, but I could actually do something with that because I have this MD selected item. Um, at the moment, I actually have to select the particular um, avatar because we've set that up previously. So when I select that, it's going to show in the main contact area, uh, content area. Um, but you could definitely you know, use any of the um, the directives that are available to go ahead and um, do some pretty powerful things uh, with just a few lines of code. Now, I haven't, I haven't changed anything in the controller to get this to work. Um, all I've done is added in the, um, the MD autocomplete directive and made sure that it, it has um, the list of items that I want to um, filter across without any of that funky code that's sitting in the demo. Uh, look, I hope that helped uh, even a little bit. I hope you give uh, autocomplete a try and use it in your app and let me know what you think. It's pretty pretty cool little feature and it's really quite easy to use once you, um, once you get your head around how it works. Um, so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out bossable.com for more details and I'll see you again soon.